Well, I can find no place else better I would rather be than in a garden with Kevin talking about daffodils. So let's go back, Kevin, to, because you, you breed these beautiful things, don't That's you? That's right. So let's start from the beginning. They're not going to drop off in a garden, create seeds and grow that way. So how do you ever get to connect them? So what I do is each year I find some really nice flowers like this one here, and I take the pollen from one, put it on the stigma of another, and I collect the seeds in the fall of that year. And then they go into pots like this. And uh, the next spring, they all germinate like this one here. And they come up like grass. They make one little leaf. Yeah. It dies down, and they make a tiny bubble. And the next year they come up, and they're a little bit thicker. Yeah. And they have a bigger little bulblet. And you plant these, and then two or three years later, they bloom. So they really are, they really are coming from seeds. Yes. And that's what the process needs to do it. That's right. So these are, when you, when you take bulbs and divide them, they're all genetically identical. Right. Every one of these is going to be a new creation. Something so in a garden then, once you plant these in the ground, the, the seedlings aren't going to make new stuff. It's going to be the bulblets in the ground that you have to plant. Okay. That's right. Yeah. In fact, they rarely make seed on their own. So that's, you that's don't have the, a problem. Okay then. Yep. Now, I see some stuff that I don't seem to recognize in daffodils, but this is what you do. So tell me a couple of things that you have done recently that you're loving and why you're loving it. Well, the, the split cup daffodils I think are really exciting. And, wow. and, the, and the split cups are different than a normal daffodil in that a normal daffodil has a cup like this one right. here that's composed of six petals. When you have a split cup, on the other hand, the six petals are now separated and they lay back on the perianth, the outer petals here. Okay. And it's a totally different look from this to this. Truly, that is a genetic difference then, right? Right. And that's what the crossing does. Right. Okay. One gene determines that split. So I can take a split cup and cross it with any other daffodil in the yard, and half of the progeny will be split cups. And half won't then. Half It'll won't. Be. That's right. And then whatever you get from that, you take for the next step of getting it, doing the pollinating, all that. That's right. So I, it's, it's a never-ending process. It's a, and it's a gamble, really. It is. It is. Yeah, you, it's a crapshoot, really. Yeah. And then what if you get them and you find one that you like? Is that the one that you concentrate on in the future? Yes. Yeah, so some of them are marked then uh, to, be, to be marketed. So I'll select a name for them and uh, they'll be propagated and sold to the public. And then if the public buys them, and when they do, they'll plant them in the ground, and it'll always be Correct. that plant. Correct. Well, you know, every time we come out here, we hear about so many different wonderful plants that Kevin works on and breeds and comes up with beautiful new creations in them. So we're going to be looking forward to these. And if you're as interested as, as I am about how they get there and the beauty that comes from them, go to Gardentime.tv, and we'll keep you informed with the new stuff that Kevin comes out with. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank always you, William. Always friend. a pleasure. <laughs>